everyone, I'm Ashley and if this is the first video of mine that you've clicked on you're probably very confused right now. Today I am revealing myself as a goddess of the earth but with oracle powers because today I'm going to be telling you my June TBR which is for the Make Your Myth Take a Readathon. I am also taking part in quite a lot of other things as well so I'll get into that in a second but the main thing for me in June is the Make Your Myth Take a Readathon which is a readathon I'm co-hosting with my friend Charlotte where you get to create your own fantasy character. There are 16 paths, you read four books to get to one of them, you can double up, there's lots of different things for it. If you haven't seen anything for it I will of course leave the announcement video down below so that you can go and check it out if you want to. And of course I had to go for one of the sorcerer paths, who's surprised? <laughs> or rather I went for two of them because I couldn't make up my mind. <laughs> so I decided to become a goddess of the earth but with prophetic powers so I'm taking both the goddess path and the oracle path. And let me tell you trying to do makeup that conveys both goddess and oracle is difficult. <laughs> but while the Make Your Myth Take a Readathon is my main readathon of the month, I am also taking part in a few other things as well. First of all, there is a Here and Queer in June readathon that is primarily happening over on Bookstagram, hosted by Holly at Spoopy Hall, and literally all you have to do for this is read some kind of book with LGBTQ plus representation in it. So for my participation in this, I've tried to gear my TBR towards LGBTQ books. Where possible, I didn't manage to get my entire TBR that way because there are a few readalongs and stuff that just didn't permit me do that but there are quite a few books on here that do suit that readathon. As well as that, I'm also very low-key taking part in Detectathon, which is hosted by Molly at Mind of Molly. I say low-key because what I've basically done is make my TBR for everything else and then fit in the prompts for the Detectathon where I could. So I don't think I'm managing all of them, but I'm managing at least half of them. And I am also going to be doing a live show at some point for that readathon as well. So again, I'll leave a link to both of those down in the description box. And then I do also have a few book club or read-along things. So as for ones I'm hosting, I do have my page on book club now. I also need to read the next book for Le Guin Along, which is a read-along I host of the Earthsea series, and I also want to try and keep up with Cosmere Along, which is hosted by Rachel at Rachel Marie. So there's quite a lot of things going into this TBR, and I'm going to try and make it make sense. <laughs> And I also need to really try and actually read all of these books because they all have some kind of multi-purpose task to them. It is a pretty hefty TBR in terms of size but I think I can do it. In fact I know I can do it because I'm an oracle and I just know these things. But I think this is going to be quite a long video so without further ado let's get into it. So starting down the goddess path my very first prompt is to read a book with a non-human main character. For this one I'm going to be reading Cry as War by Nina Varela. This one is a sci-fi crossed with a fantasy book and it's set in a world where there are humans and Otome. The Otome were created to kind of serve humans but there was an uprising at one point in which the Otome turned that against them and managed to bend the human race to their will. In this book we're following a human girl called Ayla who is a servant in the house of the Sovereign and she is trying to raise in the ranks so that she can get closer to the Sovereign's daughter Lady Cryer so that she can kill her in revenge. Lady Cryer herself has been training to become the Sovereign one day but during the course of this book she discovers that her father isn't as the benevolent Sovereign as she thought he was. This book has lesbian representation in it and so will also class for the Hearing Queer in June readathon and also fulfills a prompt to read a new to me author for Detectathon. It was also very kindly gifted to me by my friend Becca so thank you so much for this one Becca. Next up is a prompt to read a book with a foiled cover and this is probably the closest to cheating that I will get because I'm going to be reading The Well of Ascension by Brandon Sanderson which is the second book in the Mistborn trilogy and um my copy isn't foiled but a foiled copy does exist and we've said to people that as long as you know that there is a foiled edition of a book you can use it because a lot of people have been using ebooks and audiobooks and things like that so we put that rule in place and I'm going to use it to my advantage because I really want to keep up with Cosmere along. So I was determined to get this on my TBR and as I said there is a foiled cover out there, it's a pretty hardback so I think they're collector's editions. I do however need to read a summary of the first book because I read that years ago and can barely remember anything besides it being set in a world where the whole premise is that the evil people of the story have already won so this world is really quite grim and dark and just not a nice place to live and book one follows the stirrings of a revolution. Now that's pretty much all I remember. I remember some key points to it but I do need to read a summary so that I can actually go into this one without being completely clueless at where we left off. <laughs> I was also determined to get this early on in my TBR because you do have to read your first four books in order. I was determined to get this within the first four because it's a chonker. <laughs> 
so I'm glad I managed to squeeze this on towards the beginning. I do also have the audiobook for this one so I think I'm going to read along with it because I really like doing that with big fantasy books and hopefully it will get me through it a little bit quicker than I initially would myself. <laughs> Next up is to read the highest rated book on your TBR. Now for this one you could either go on Goodreads and find the highest average rated book or you could post a poll somewhere and read the book that received the highest amount of votes. Now the latter option is the one that I went with because I wanted to make sure that as many of these books as possible did have LGBTQ plus rep in it. So I made a poll featuring all books that had that kind of rep in it and the one that won was Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. This one was gifted to me by Lincoln Springer so thank you so so much for that one and I'm so glad that this one actually won because I have been wanting to read this book for so long. This one follows a girl called Elizabeth who is raised as a foundling in a magical library that is home to grimoires. Now I believe the purpose of the librarians is to keep the monsters at bay but then one of their most deadly ones escapes and so the story begins. I believe that one of the main characters Nathaniel is bisexual. I've seen quite a lot of discussion lately about how people seem to erase that fact and I actually didn't know that literally until the day before I was going to do this poll so that was brought to my attention just at the right moment and I decided to throw it on because I know this one is a popular one and it did win so this one is my choice for highest rated. And the final prompt on the goddess path was to randomise your TBR because divine intervention and you could do this in any way you wanted to so I decided to leave this option up to my patrons because we do have a quarterly book club but because that is starting in July I didn't want to wait until that long until my patrons received something from it so we do actually have a one-off one month long read along in June and the choice for what we read is always going to be left to my patrons so I decided that would fulfil this prompt and the book that they chose was Bone Cryer's Moon by Catherine Purdy which I'm so so happy about because I have been wanting to read this book since I got it recently and I was I just didn't think I'd be able to get it on my June TBR but then my patrons pulled through so thank you for that. <laughs> this is one of those books that I find really difficult to describe without having read it because the synopsis is just multiple perspectives and I don't know what the main like plot path is <laughs> but it seems to follow a group of people called the bone criers who almost act as gatekeepers into the world of the dead so they ferry people into the underworld and we follow one girl who wants to become the matriarch but in order to become the matriarch you have to kill your one true love there is a guy who comes into it who i believe is said true love <laughs> but who's also seeking revenge against the bone criers because they killed somebody he knew and then there is also the main character's best friend who is trying to break the bond between these two because apparently they will all die so this is what i mean when i say it's quite hard to pinpoint what the main plot path is. So hopefully once I do actually read this book I'll be able to give a more concise and coherent synopsis because that was just a mess. But I'm very excited to read this one. I've heard nothing but good things so far. If you have read it, can anybody let me know if there is LGBTQ plus rep in it? I don't think there is. I haven't seen anybody mention it but also I didn't actually know that most of these books had rep in it until pretty recently so who knows at this point. So then we move on to the oracle path but to get to the oracle character I am actually starting off as a jester so one thing about this readathon if you don't know is that you can cross over paths. Each of the characters is paired up with another one and you can cross over to their path once you read the third prompt so that's what I'm doing. I'm starting off as a jester and then when I get to the third one jumping over to the oracle path. So the jester path starts off with the prompt to read a fun middle grade and for this one I'm going to be reading the third book in the Earthsea series which is The Father Show. This book does have a very questionable age range to it. I personally don't see it as a middle grade but it is always categorised that way in the UK. So I've decided to use it for this prompt nonetheless and this is also fulfilling the Le Guin Along read-along that I host. So we will be having a live show for both book two and three in the OT series at the beginning of July so I really need to get on it and read them. The first book in the series, A Wizard of Earthsea, follows a boy called Ged who goes to a magic school. He's always been very apt at magic, he's been very good at it. He's always told that he's just a natural at it and when he goes to a magic school he kind of gets into a feud with one of the other boys there who challenges him to prove his power. When Ged tries to do this he actually releases this weird shadow demon into the world which always follows him and the entire story is him trying to escape this demon. We do already have a live show for the first book if you want to watch that I'll leave a link to it down below but as I said we do have another live show coming up and so this one I had to get it onto the TBR. This one is a bind up of four books by the way which it looks pretty long but each of the books is only about 100 pages long so should be a pretty quick read which I think is very much needed with how many books I want to read this month. Although the first book very much went against that assumption so we'll see how this goes but um Hopefully it'll be nice to me. <laughs> this book was also gifted to me by Cody, so thank you Cody for this one. Continuing on with my path, we have the prompt to read a book with the royal colours on it, those being red, purple or gold. Now for this one, I'm using Ivy Aberdeen's Letters to the World by Ashley Herring Blake, which is not a book that I would usually go for, but we have reasons. <laughs> so first of all, I'm just going to confront the fact that this does not have 
a lot of any of the colours I've just mentioned on. It is a very colourful book but we do have the slightest hints of purple where the pink and the blue mix together so I'm taking it. And the reason why this one has to be on my TBR is because this is the group book for Detectathon. This book was actually gifted to me by Molly so thank you so much for that one. Now this one very nearly ended up being the book for the previous prompt because this one is actually also a middle grade. This one follows a girl called Ivy Aberdeen whose entire life is uprooted in a way because there is a tornado and her house is destroyed, her family is uprooted and she loses a journal in the process. Now this journal actually contains lots of doodles and drawings of girls holding hands so she's very worried about this going missing because it might show the secret that she thinks these sort of thoughts but then at school she starts receiving pages of the notebook back in her locker alongside notes telling her to be open about her identity. She suspects it to be a girl who she actually quite likes in her class and so the investigation behind who stole her notebook is afoot. <laughs> now this book is the entire inspiration behind Detectathon and the reason why it is the group book. It's really not my sort of thing because it's both contemporary and a middle grade but I do want to read more middle grade and it is a thing that I've been trying more often and I think I need something to break up the fantasy so this is probably a good thing to have on my TBR especially around halfway through so it's going to be intriguing seeing what this one is like if anything it should be a really quick read because the writing is massive and it's not that long so we'll see how this one goes oh and of course this one also fits for the here and queer again in June readathon too Next up we have the prompt to read a book about books which is the crossover prompt and this is where I jump over to the oracle path and for this one I'm reading The Library of the Unwritten by AJ Hackworth. This one, I've been so intrigued about this one. So this one again follows a magical library type situation but this library houses books that are unfinished so the librarians of this one have to keep the characters in their books and in their place because most of them are trying to escape to find their ending. Now I believe it's actually a hero that escapes in this one and causes absolute chaos trying to find his ending. Now what intrigues me about this one is that the very end of the synopsis mentions a former muse, a nervous demon courier, and also something that goes so horrifyingly wrong that it could reshape the boundaries of heaven and hell. So this sounds intense and I want to know what's going on. Everybody seems to love this book and apparently it's really nicely written. So I'm intrigued to see what the hell is going on in this book for a start, but this one also fulfills the Here and Queer Again in June readathon because I believe this has lesbian rep in it, I think. But it definitely has some kind of rep in it, I do remember that much. <laughs> And then to finish off my path as an oracle, I have to read a five star prediction. Now for this one, I'm actually going to read one of the many ebooks that I bought recently. And that one is Daughter of the Blood by Anne Bishop. Now this one, I'm actually going to be buddy reading with Jean at Jean's Thoughts, which is going to be great motivation for me to actually read it because I tend to forget that ebooks actually exist. <laughs> this is the first book in the Black Jewel series and apparently it's very dark, is incredible and is a lot of people's underrated favorite. So I am very intrigued about what this book is because so many people recommended it to me when I asked for dark fantasy fantasy recommendations and I want to see why because the synopsis to me doesn't sound that dark so I want to see how it actually pulls through with that. <laughs> so I'm actually just going to read out the synopsis of this one because it's another one which I would find quite difficult to explain but this one says the darkness has had a prince for a long long time now the queen is coming. For years the realm of Tyrael has been falling into corruption as the powerful queens who rule it turn to cruelty but there is hope. A prophetic vision has revealed the coming of a queen more powerful than any before and once the foundations of her power father brother, lover, are in place, she will emerge from the darkness bringing freedom. For she is a living myth, dreams made flesh. Not just any witch, but witch. That last bit is the reason why I'm a little bit confused because it's like, she's not just a witch, she's witch. <laughs> and I'm like, the difference? I don't see it yet. But this book feels very fitting being my final oracle prompt because it includes prophetic visions. Perfect. So if this one lives up to everything that everybody has said to me when recommending it, I really do think this could end up being a five star prediction because so, so many people love it. And it seems to be one of those fantasy series which nobody really mentions, but then when you do mention it, it's suddenly everybody's favorite. I don't know what it is about that, but as soon as I even came into contact with this book once, everybody suddenly loved it. So <laughs> I was really confused about that, but I'm hoping I end up falling down the I love it route too, so. So that is the end of my path for Make Your Myth Taker. However, there is actually one more book that I didn't quite manage to get onto that TBR, but we'll be getting to as soon as possible. I just didn't put it in because I thought I would have it read in May and I didn't, so here we are. <laughs> but that book is Restless Slumber by KJ Sutton. I read the first book, Fortuna Sworn, and absolutely loved it. Both Fortuna Sworn and Restless Slumber were actually sent to me by the author for review via ebooks, so I really do need to get to these ones as soon as possible. But the first book, Fortuna Sworn, follows a girl called Fortuna Sworn, who is the last of her kind, her kind being a nightmare. 
Her brother went missing two years ago and is presumed dead until a fear turns up at her work and suggests otherwise. But in order to gain more information, Fortuna has to agree to a bargain with this fear, the bargain being to marry him. So this one very much is a dark fairy romance and it completely lives up to everything that that would suggest. So I'll leave a link to my vlog in which I read this book down below and a link to my written review on Goodreads as well because I absolutely love this book and I seriously cannot wait to read the sequel even though I know it's going to destroy my heart and soul. I'm gonna suffer but I'm gonna be happy about it. So those are all the books on my June TBR to make me a goddess of the earth and an oracle. There were so many readathons and read-alongs and book clubs in this video that I probably missed out some detail somewhere, but I really do think that this is going to be what I need in June. I do have a lot of things coming up that are really quite stressful, but hopefully the readathon and everything will pick me up again and give me something to look forward to because I genuinely cannot believe how many people are doing this readathon, how many people are getting involved, how many people are going all out, people are making graphics, they're making their own characters, people are dressing up. It's just blown my mind and I love it. I love it so much. We do have a playlist for the Make Your Myth Taker videos, so there's a whole lot of TBRs already in there, so I'll leave a link to that playlist down below and if you make your own TBR or any reading vlogs or anything, then definitely tag us because I will add it to that. But it makes me so happy seeing people get so involved and I can't believe so many people are dressing up, so it's incredible and I'm glad that you guys like it, so... We're about to start, we're so close to June now, which is kind of scary, but it's gonna be great. So let me know if you've read any of the books that are on this TBR and what your thoughts on them were if you have, or let me know one of your most anticipated reads of June, what path you're going for if you're taking part in Make Your Myth Taker. I would genuinely love to hear from you all. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to leave a like and a comment to let me know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already, then please consider doing so. Down in the description box, you'll find information to everything I've mentioned in this video, all of my social media and other booky stuff as well. So be sure to check that out if you haven't already but for now I hope you're having a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye!